हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेरी वार्म वेलकम टू दिस कोर्स ऑन वेल्डिंग मेटलर्जी सो इट्स माई प्लेजर टू बी एसोसिएटेड विथ यू ऑल वी विल बी स्टडिंग दिस कोर्स वेल्डिंग मेटलर्जी होपफुली यू माइट हैव सीन द सिलेबस ऑफ द कोर्स एंड आई विल बी ग्लैड टू बी विथ यू सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट लेक्चर ऑफ द कोर्स and we will have the overview of the course as well as uh, the introduction of uh, the topics like welding metallurgy how it will be useful for us as you know uh, let me give you some uh, brief information that this is a 12 week course so uh, we will uh, have different topics that we will discuss uh, uh, later and uh, in that in every week uh, we will have one assignment so that assignment uh, you know, will be you know visible to you you have to uh, solve the assignment questions you have to submit it so ultimately it will carry certain weightage and then uh, you will have the uh, final uh, examination uh, towards the end so uh, many of you i hope uh, have taken this course as a credit course and uh, uh depending upon how you perform in this course uh, you will be able to uh, use these uh, you know, marks or the grades for the academic purpose or for other purposes uh, so i hope that you will be getting a full benefit and i, I will be also giving my best uh, to make you understand to uh, uh, you know to make you, you know, fully you know be aware about uh, the contents of the welding metallurgy course so as we discussed that this is a 12 week course and uh, we will have different uh, you know um, uh, topics which will be covered now uh, the topics what uh, we see that uh, as we go week wise so in the first week we will uh, talk about the introduction to welding metallurgy and then we will talk about the phase diagrams we will slowly come and discuss about the importance of the Uh, various topics how they are going to be used uh, you know uh, in context uh, with this course uh, then you have uh, phase in form transformation so uh, phase transformation uh, uh, you might have also the introductory you know knowledge about the phase transformation so we will talk about the phase transformation processes uh, metal strengthening approaches uh, Uh, that is another uh, you know topic uh, where we will talk about the different approaches how to strengthen the metals and alloys so we'll talk about it then you have uh, heat treatment processes we know that uh, we try to enhance the mechanical properties of the material uh, by different uh, types of heat treatment processes so that will be covered under that uh, you know in that week then uh, heat flow and temperature distribution in welding so in that basically uh, we will talk about uh, you know how uh, the heat flow is there during the welding process where is, how the temperature distribution is at different places and then how the temperature varies with time so that will give you an idea of uh, uh, you know temperature gradient then depending upon that there will be microstructural changes so that will be uh, discussed then you have a concept of solidification in welding in the week 6 we will talk about uh, the different types of welding uh, you know uh, you know solidification processes especially in casting and welding so normally when we talk about solidification we normally cover you know or relate that with the casting processes but uh, the similar type of concept is there in the case of welding also so that we will have uh, certainly today uh, we will be having some light over that Uh, weld crack, crack uh, metal cracking will be in uh, week seven. Heat affected zones week eight. Uh, week nine we'll talk about the crystallization and grain growth phenomena. Then uh, week ten will be partially melted zone grain boundary solidification. Then uh, week eleven is liquidation cracking, hydrogen cracking, and uh, in the end in the twelfth week we will talk about the metallurgical issues in. welding so overall uh, you will have these 12 weeks and in all these uh, 12 weeks uh, we have uh, five lectures each of um, approximately 30 minutes of duration so uh, altogether we will have uh, uh, a very good uh, you know um, 
time in between where we will discuss in detail about the different topics. We will have it uh, later, we will talk about it little bit in detail. Now, talking about uh, you know the welding metallurgy course as you know. Uh, so, welding metallurgy has uh, two you know terms, uh, one is welding, another is uh, metallurgy and I hope that uh, you are aware of these two uh, terminologies. So, as we know that welding uh, you know which is also one of the joining processes. So, it is a process in which materials of the same fundamental type or class are brought together and caused to join through the formation of primary or secondary chemical bonds under the combined action of heat and pressure. So, uh, if you try to uh, look at the different type of welding processes or joining processes as you know. So, uh, we know that uh, you have uh, different type of joining that is one is mechanical joint where we use these uh, uh, rivets, we use the um, you know uh, nuts and bolts. So, they are basically, uh, so if there may be permanent or you know. So, once we talk about uh, the uh, you know if you talk about the joining processes. So, joining processes uh, typically when we talk uh, in, a, in a very broad manner you will may have the temporary type of uh, joint, you may have semi permanent type of joint. and you have uh, permanent type of uh, uh, joint. So, as we know that uh, when we are trying to join you know for engineering applications many a times you have uh, to join uh, two materials. Now, their joining can be either temporary or semi permanent or permanent. Now, in temporary means you have uh, you know uh, uh, metal which is two parent metal which are to be joined. Uh, so, you know, in the case of temporary you can whenever you feel you can uh, dismantle them you can take them uh, apart and both your uh, you know the parent metal as well as the metal with which you are joining the medium with which you are joining they are intact like you have uh, uh, nut and bolt joint. So, that is the example of temporary joint. Similarly, you have a semi permanent join where joint where uh, you whenever you try to dismantle them you have to take it uh, take them uh, separate them. In that case your parent metal is uh, no, uh, not at loss you are not losing, but certainly you are you are the, the medium with which you are joining that is lost. So, that is your semi permanent type of bond and uh, you joining and that is uh, the typical example is rivets. Because uh, when you remove these uh, um, plates uh, which, which are riveted then the rivet material is gone. Uh, and then comes the permanent uh, joint. So, in that permanent joint basically uh, we are concerned with uh, those uh, you know processes where it is a permanent type of joint where if you try to you know uh, remove them or separate them or you uh, in that case there is loss uh, I mean uh, loss to both. So, uh, because the joining is at uh, you know molecular level. So, uh, you you have to you have uh, nothing uh, both of them are to be altered again for further you know uh, application. So, you add, so uh, in this case when we talk about welding metallurgy. So, you know, so this is basically the welding uh, classification of welding process in that and, and then uh, in this case we are going to talk about the, uh, the, the processes which are coming under these permanent type of uh, joining processes. And again in permanent type of joining processes you have you may have classification based upon the type of heat source. So, whether you apply uh, you know pressure or you are not applying pressure uh, your type of uh, source may be based on electric based on uh, chemical that is fuel. So, uh, so, you will have basically fusion type of welding in these cases and when you, you know, fuse the material and, and when you do the joining. In that case because of the high temperature uh, there is likelihood of uh, the and there is certainty uh, also uh, on the changes in the microstructure of uh, uh, the material in a zone. So, that zone basically has uh, the changed structure, changed mechanical properties. Now, uh, uh, that is to be understood how that is changed then while joining also what kind of uh, you know. Uh, 
uh, you know changes take place, what needs to be taken into account so that ultimately you are getting a good weld. So, basically uh, when we talk about temporary joint or semi permanent joint, uh, you know, we are not uh, we, are, we are thinking of uh, you know in temporary you are thinking simply thinking of joinings, we are not going into that metallurgical aspect. Whereas, when we are going to permanent type of joint especially the fusion welding uh, processes. Now, in those cases you are melting uh, a zone and then that zone gets uh, solidified. So, uh, during that process whatever uh, changes occur typically in a casting process like uh, you will have uh, the uh, you know solidification. Now, most of the defects which are coming uh, you know apart from the defect which arise due to molding material they are separate, but the defects which are coming because of the uh, weld matter I mean uh, cast metal. So, uh, those kind of defects are likely in this case because this is also a type of solidification. So, uh, you know in these cases you need to uh, uh, look into those aspects to ensure that your uh, uh, weld metal ultimately your aim is to have a sound weld. Uh, so, that uh, you have better mechanical properties uh, towards the end. So, you know what we see that uh, in this case you are uh, your uh, purpose is to join them for formation of the bond under the combined action of heat and pressure. So, uh, so both the uh, actions are there and under that you are uh, basically your aim is to have uh, you know the uh, best uh, mechanical properties. Uh, defect free product. So, you are thinking of having uh, such a, you know you have to analyze on many aspect what way you know the properties may change, what way the properties may be affected, how the you know how the physics is uh, uh, can be interpreted basically uh, uh, while doing that process. So, all these things uh, we will have certain uh, you know uh, session uh, or, or lectures. So, we will have these lectures uh, uh, in a continuous manner and we will talk one by one about all these processes. So, in that uh, we will see that we have to discuss about the metallurgical aspects, material science aspects. So, in, in that we are talking of going to talk about the you know phase diagrams where we will see that how the two metals which are going to be welded. Now, if uh, or filler metal which is there in the weld pool. So, the how they are going to make the compounds whether we are not going uh, I mean we are like whether we are likely to have any uh, you know undesirable intermetallic compound formation or how uh, good gelling will be there. So, those aspects will be you know studied then uh, uh, we are going to uh, also talk uh, about the strengthening approaches and all that. So, uh, metallurgically you must be able to uh, you know uh, better understand so that uh, you are able to give a good weld joint. Uh, so, as we discuss that welding uh, we know that welding uh, that is a process. Then metallurgy what is metallurgy that also we know that is the science and technology of metals. So, in that we are talking about the science and technology of the metals how uh, you know we are talking that, that concept is coming uh, from the physics chemistry and crystallography. So, basically we talk about the material science aspects in that uh, we talk about the metals different type of metals their behaviors then uh, how they can uh, you, you I mean uh, how they can interact with them with each other when they are molten. So, that will be based upon the phase diagram principles that uh, you know we will see that what type of phases are formed at what temperature and uh, uh, in that also we can discuss uh, further about the phase transformation processes, we will talk about the solidification mechanisms, we will talk about the different phases which are formed uh, un by undergoing the different kind of uh, atmosphere like uh, if you have different type of uh, uh, cooling mechanism, if you have different type of uh, heat treatment then how uh, the different phases are formed and how their mechanical properties. Uh, will be different. So, all these things uh, uh, we, we have to understand uh, in that and then uh, you know uh, different way you know, of uh, different types of uh, you know uh, uh, processes uh, uh, will also be uh, you know studied 
uh, to understand it uh, better. Now, uh, coming to uh, know more about the metallurgy, so it is the science that explores why metals behave the way they do. So, in metallurgy normally that is what uh, we are uh, you know trying to understand that why metals behave in a certain manner, why a certain metal uh, will be you know giving you more strength when you age or why certain metals will give you more strength when you cold deform them. So, so, so basically uh, in the case of uh, uh, science of metallurgy uh, you know we are going to talk about uh, you know uh, the behavior of the material and uh, it will also explain the properties behavior and internal structure of metals. So, uh, in that we try to understand that what is the internal structure we go from crystallography we talk about uh, um, you know the how the crystal structure is how it is uh, going to have uh, uh, the different properties when combined with other material. I think these things you must have studied in the course of material science. Then uh, uh, this uh, from there we will be able to explain the properties behavior and structure of metals. It will also describe the treatments and processes that allow us to tailor a metals properties to a specific application. Now, when you know that what will be the behavior of the material when subjected to a certain kind of treatment, then depending upon the need, uh, upon your need, you can try to uh, you know tailor the materials properties. You can have the uh, different type of uh, treatment uh, uh, you can give to uh, materials and uh, in that uh, you will get the tailor made applica you know properties you that can be used for a uh, particular application and uh, that way uh, it will help you to uh, come up with new and new materials which are used for which uh, have to be used for uh, you know um, uh, different type of uh, uh, advanced applications. So, nowadays uh, we certainly need you know uh, we, we, we have the uh, need of uh, welding and, and for that uh, you know at, at many places and for that we must understand that when you have the tailor made uh, materials with tailor made properties then how to again further weld them. Because uh, you see once you have uh, the material the challenge is that how you can increase the longevity of the you know component because many a times they fail. So, rather than bringing the new material you can be uh, you can use them by uh, you know uh, welding and then further uh, use it for a large you know amount of time. So, that will increase the productivity of the organization. So, so that will be the uh, metallurgy. Then welding when we talk so uh, that is basically kind of procedure or technique which is uh, entirely appropriate for one and disastrous for another. So, that is what uh, you know, we needed to uh, discuss that uh, if suppose you have one metal and you have come to a different type of uh, a process uh, you have fabricated for I mean, you know you have devised. So, you cannot say that that will be used for uh, another metal too. So, many a times if you use the same thing then that may be disastrous for other. So, you must have the proper understanding you know you must be uh, very familiar with different types of base materials and how they are affected by heating and cooling processes. So, basically uh, when we talk about welding, so it is nothing but uh, when you talk about fusion welding, so you are heating and then you are cooling. Now, the way you do for one metal and the way you do for second metal that may be may have a different effect completely different effect. So, these things need to be uh, kept in mind so that you get the, um, the best properties. Now, uh, certain issues like although most of the welders gain knowledge of metals and a metals weldability over many years, often it is incomplete because it is limited to the processor materials used in particular software industry. So, as we discussed that many a times some person may be working on uh, a certain process or a, on a certain material for many you know uh, for large amount of time. But that not, does not mean that he is expert in all these uh, all other processes because uh, you know uh, uh, the, the mechanism is different 
the, the result which uh, have to be obtained they are different. So, you need to have a uh, more complete understanding of metallurgical principles. So, so, that is required you must know the metallurgical principles you must, must know the metallurgy behind it. Uh, so, that uh, like uh, the relationship between metals properties and its composition. So, you know if the metal is having different composition what will be the properties like many a times you are welding uh, two metals of same composition with uh, and, and you do not have a filler material. So, you are using filler material of different composition you must be able to know that if you are using the filler metal of different composition then what way it is going to affect the mechanical properties in certain area uh, especially in that uh, well pool zone. So, uh, that composition and then the function of the processes such as cold working, alloying, heat treatment all these things will have what kind of effect uh, on the material properties that needs to be understood. So, so, for that you need to study the, the welding metallurgy uh, in uh, you know uh, detail. Now, this will allow us to have more awareness about the you know, processes and materials and take appropriate decisions further. So, once you have a better understanding about you know the metals properties and depending upon its composition. So, basically many things will be clear from the you know concept of phase diagram. So, so, from there you will have a proper understanding that how which of the materials have you know better gelling they can have uh, they can make you a compound of better you know uh, properties. So, from there and then also the phase transformation processes or the different uh, you know processes like CCT or C uh, you know uh, TTT curves will uh, let you know that what kind of uh, you know uh, heat treatment process will give you which kind of phase which will be uh, more useful. So, these things uh, can be uh, better understood when uh, you study these uh, welding, metallurgy, welding metallurgy course. So, uh, finally, the what is the aim of the course? So, as we know uh, that uh, we have to focus on uh, understanding the uh, metallurgy and the solidification of weld beds. So, first of all we must uh, uh, understand the metallurgy as well as the solidification of the weld beds. Uh, then uh, make the students aware with the metallurgical aspects of welding. There are many uh, issues, many metallurgical aspects uh, are there in the welding. You, you must be uh, able to judge the uh, weldability aspect also uh, how when you are welding two materials whether how uh, weldable they are how uh, good bond can be developed between them. So, that is uh, you know these aspects need to be understood. Then uh, you have uh, the uh, to make the students aware of uh, the science behind the welding phenomena especially in the domain of weld metal solidification heat transfer heat treatment processes strengthening mechanism CTCs we will have uh, one eye over there. And it can be used for engineering graduates uh, as well as professionals working in the area of welding. And as we discussed uh, earlier, so now we can see that uh, uh, these are the you know topics which are going to be covered. So, in, in, the, in the first case we will have a introduction to welding metallurgy and we will talk about the phase diagrams where you will try to uh, have the overview of uh, the metals and its composition its effect on the properties. So, uh, and, and different type of phase diagrams for ferrous as well as non ferrous materials. So, uh, what is the concept behind the you know use of phase diagrams uh, and, and how that can be useful uh, when we are studying the uh, welding subjects. Uh, then uh, you have phase transformation in that uh, phase transformation we are going to talk especially about the solidification you know uh, uh, aspects uh, you know uh, how the different type of heat treatments are uh, you know. So, uh, in the phase transformation basically we are going to talk about the CCT or TTT curves. So, how the different uh, phases which are transformed how they are uh, different when you have the different type of uh, treatments given different type of uh, you know heating or cooling given how they will give you different phases. So, that will be under phase transformation. Uh, then you have metal strengthening approaches. Uh, in that we are going to talk about the different mechanisms because we know 
that we do not use normally the pure metals for the engineering purposes because they are either too soft or too ductile, uh, too much ductile many a times and we have to compromise on strength in many cases. So, you have to uh, strengthen them and strengthening can be based on uh, many principles you may have uh, uh, the strengthening uh, uh, you know by doing uh, giving proper treatment or you may go for you know uh, the precipitation hardening. So, there are different types of uh, strengthening approach that needs to be discussed and basically uh, that also will be useful while doing the welding. Heat treatment processes we know that these uh, processes are used uh, to enhance the uh, bulk properties of the material many a times the surface properties of the material. So, different type of heat treatment processes are there which are to be used. In the case of heat flow and temperature distribution in uh, welding, now in this case uh, as you know that uh, you know in the case of welding if you take the example of welding it is nothing but when you talk about the fusion welding it is nothing but the movement of a heat source in a particular direction and you have the heat dissipation uh, on the sides. Now, as this uh, sides uh, on, uh, on the both side you have parent metal and that is normally of very small dimension. So, the heat transfer rate is quite high normally and how the heat transfer is going to be, uh, how much fast it is and how it is going to affect the properties, how the um, you know uh, the speed of the welding is going to affect the properties. So, these uh, you know uh, uh, different things will be uh, discussed in the case of heat flow and temperature distribution in uh, welding how the temperature will in which area temperature will be more how it will decrease uh, in the nearby zones. So, that will be studied in that. Then you have a, a concept of uh, solidification in welding. So, in that basically uh, solidification in welding is somewhat different simply because in this case uh, uh, in the case of uh, you know uh, solidification we know that normally you have uh, heterogeneous and homogeneous type of nucleation and that is basically further after nucleation you have growth. So, that is uh, normally the mechanism of solidification. Now, it is a kind of heterogeneous nucleation where you have uh, one you know layer which is available and from there there will be further growth. So, in the case of uh, welding it is normally epitaxial type of growth. And uh, depending upon the uh, rate of solidification or, or, or uh, uh, the degree of uh, temperature gradient, you know, the temperature gradient which you are getting in that case, that will be uh, deciding how much brittle will the metal be or how much ductile the metal be, whether you need to give further any treatment uh, to reduce the brittleness which you have achieved by the sudden uh, cooling of the material. So, all that. Uh, you know weld metal cracking. So, that is uh, uh, cracking is another issue because when you do the welding. So, because of the heat flow because of the large temperature gradient uh, because of the stresses involved you have the uh, you know uh, examples of cracking uh, you, cracking is very common in the case of weld metal. So, that uh, needs to be understood who, what type of cracks are there what are the reasons for these cracks and how they can be avoided. So, all these things are studied heat affected zone as we told that. Uh, Heat affected zone is required to be understood because uh, when you do the welding in certain zone that temperature the microstructure is affected. Now, there the properties will be affected. So, how to reduce that zone? What are the methods by which you can have the reduction of those zones and how they are going to affect the properties? So, basically based on that you can decide what way these materials can be used. So, that will be uh, in the heat affected zones you have crystallization and grain growth because of the high temperature which you are going because you are going to the melting zone in this case. So, you will have crystallization and grain growth and how that is going to affect the properties we will study different aspects of that. Then you have partially melted zone grain boundary solidification that is another issue which uh, you know partially melted zones are there because uh, at the fusion boundary zone you will have the partial melted zone and, and then uh, you have the grain boundary solidification also. So, these aspects will be studied cracking hydrogen cracking that is cold cracking. So, that uh, is another way another challenge in these cases and then further we will talk about the metallurgical issues. So, what are the different uh, challenges which we face in the case of uh, the welding and uh, I mean from metallurgical point of view. So, this will be the normally the uh, 
uh, of course overview. We will be having uh, the uh, lectures uh, uh, so uh, uh, in continuation and we will be having uh, more and more interview. We will have also some live interaction uh, about uh, the different you know uh, if you have any kind of uh, you know clarification required. So, we will have also the uh, you know interaction in between and hope that uh, you will enjoy uh, the lectures and you will enjoy this course and do good by scoring more and more in this course. Thank you very much.